All You Need to Know, the Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Good morning and thanks for listening in. This is the All You Need to Know podcast on Bloomberg Quint and I'm Alex Matthew. Today is the 22nd of May. India has prescribed price bans for airfares along with other rules as airlines resume operations starting the 25th of May, two months after the nation ordered the world's strictest lockdown to contain the COVID-19 pandemic. The ministry studied existing rates and looked at corresponding rail fares before arriving at realistic minimum and maximum fares, according to Aviation Minister Hardeep Singh Puri. According to a statement by the Directorate General of Civil Aviation that was released uh, yesterday, the fares range between 2,000 rupees and 18,000 rupees depending on the duration of the flight. For example, the price band for a Mumbai Delhi flight has been fixed at 3,500 rupees to 10,000 rupees. Additionally, 40% of the seats that are sold on any flight will have to be sold at the midpoint of the range for each section. The COVID-19 cases continue to mount in India though, as the highly contagious pathogen infected more than 1.12 lakh people. As many as 5,609 new cases were added in the 24 hours to 8 a.m. yesterday. And the fight against the pandemic was only made that much harder in the states of Odisha and West Bengal as Cyclone Amphan struck, forcing authorities to evacuate as many as 6.5 lakh people. Amphan is the fiercest cyclone to have hit West Bengal in a hundred years. If you or your family have been affected, our thoughts and prayers go to you. Meanwhile, talks between the Indian and Chinese military to end escalating tensions along their disputed border have ended in a deadlock. Border incidents are at their highest level since 2015, according to senior Indian security officials. The armies are currently on a high alert at two locations along the line of actual control between India and China. Additional troops have been rushed to the border by both sides and are facing each other at the Galwan River and at the disputed Pangong Tso Lake in the Tibetan Plateau, portions of which are claimed by both countries. In other news, India Ratings and Research has estimated that the COVID-19 pandemic and the loss of economic activity due to the consequent national lockdown could worsen the stress on bank balance sheets in the ongoing financial year. According to the rating agency's estimates, 5.5 lakh crore worth of slippages could show up for banks in the 2020-21 financial year, at least 40% of which will come from non-corporate loan exposures. The Indian government has eased norms of the partial credit guarantee scheme for NBFCs and extended the timeline as it aims to address liquidity issues for non-bank lenders and to secure them from future defaults. It has also now released a statement detailing FAQs on the scheme. Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund has stopped fresh investments into its credit guarantee fund and medium-term plan effective today. According to the management, it's a measure to protect existing investors in the two schemes as the fund house expects a change in the classification of some of the debt securities it had written down, which could result in a markup in the scheme's NAV. Amazon.com has launched its online food delivery operations in select PIN codes of Bengaluru months after Uber Technologies quit the hyper-competitive market in India. For more details on which areas are being serviced, do look up the story on the website BloombergQuint.com. In international markets, U.S. stocks fell as rising trade tensions between America and China added to concern about the pace of recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. The three early rises in the Asia-Pacific region have started the session mixed, with one flat, one in the green, and the third in the red. With that, it's over to Agam Vakil for the trade setup for the day in India. Morning, Agam. How are we likely to end the week? 
Good morning, Alex, and a happy Friday, listeners. Asia is trading absolutely flat, and the SGX Nifty is trending marginally in the red at this point in time, which means we may likely see a quiet start to trading day to day. We start with CIPLA, which has received the final approval for its abbreviated new drug application for the generic version of Migranil by the US FDA. The drug is a nasal spray used to treat migraine headaches, reports Bloomberg News. Indiglobe Aviation said in a press release that it will be resuming domestic flights from May 25th in a phased manner as per government directives. The company also said that it will operate 97 Kerala reparation flights to the Middle East. Moving on, Bandhan Bank has an update on the impact of Cyclone Amphan. In the bank's area of operations, 49 banking units, that is micro banking outlets, in five districts were impacted, out of which 45 are operational as on May 21st. Business of around 65,000 microbanking borrowers amounting to an exposure of roughly 260 crores could be impacted due to the cyclone, according to the bank. The bank expects another handful of outlets to resume operations shortly. Indian Oil Corporation has cut the run rate of its Haldia refinery in eastern india's west bengal state to half its capacity after the cyclone disrupted electricity and fresh water supplies the state-run refiner will review the supply situation on may 22nd to decide on the haldi operations coforge or formerly known as nit technologies has offered to buy back nearly 3.1 percent of the total equity Priced at 1725 rupees per share, aggregating to 337 odd crores. The buyback is at a premium of 20% to yesterday's closing price. In today's day of trade, we watch out for UPL and JSW Seal among some of the important companies which will report results today. As for yesterday, for some companies which did come with Earnings post market hours. We had VST Industries where revenues rose 7%, net profit rose 33%, and margins also increased owing to lower material costs. But it wasn't such a great quarter for BSC where revenues rose just 3% year on year and it also took a net loss of 1.3 crores versus a net profit of 52 crores year on year. There was an EBITDA loss of 22 crores. Investment income was down 42% at 30.5 crores and other income was down nearly 60%. The company has received observations from SEBI in respect to inspection of conducted from 2005 and 2017 in which the company was asked to plow back some of these funds against expenses charged earlier. Now, these are just some of the stock you can watch out for as we move into trade today. But don't forget to go through our morning edition of All You Need to Know only on BloombergQuint.com. Thanks, Agam. And as always, thank you all for listening in. This is Alex Matthews signing off. Have a great day and an even better weekend. I hope you enjoyed listening to All You Need to Know. Did you know that you can listen to this show on the IVM Podcast app? On the IVM Podcast app, along with this, we have a number of other shows which you think you'll enjoy. Listen to Cyrus Says with Cyrus Brocha as the host. Listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta. The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Varma or Shunya One hosted by Shiladitya Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM Podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy.